Hi everybody, welcome. I am very busy. <laughs> I am trying to do about 33 things at once. Do you ever do that? Yeah, I'm in the process of packing a kiln and I'm sort of like at the tail end of packing this kiln and I've got like multiple things going on on my table here and in the other room and Anyway, big hello. Yeah, I'm just here. I'm actually. Um, I'll do a bit, I'm trying to do a bit of decorating here. So just join me for that. Yeah, I've got some um, T bowls here, which have a clear, a clear glaze over. But they. Um, hang on, let me put on another light behind me here. Let's see if we can get. A, just a little bit more light coming from a different angle. Yeah, these these are tea bowls which have a thin glaze on top of a a uh, a white slip underneath, and um, another one here. And then these are some just smaller little bowls here, which have got the same treatment. They're kind of like a a swirl of white slip. Yes, so I just want to do some quick spontaneous decorations. And... Um, Just iron oxide and um Yes, oh yeah, I was trying to get this kiln off actually today, but it didn't happen. I just got, I, uh, I just thought, why am I pushing myself like this? This is ridiculous. <laughs> part of the, part of the, Part of the problem was that in this firing, I do have some um, some raw glaze pots, quite a, quite a number actually. And I and I thought, you know, if you've got raw glaze pots mixed in with bisque fired pots, you need to be you need to be a bit careful because you know you don't want to you don't want to run the risk of any of them blowing up you know and then you have the the you have a mess all over the kiln you basically got to stop the kiln and empty everything out repack it clean it you know it's like a the biggest pain you can imagine so Yeah. I try to keep these decorations kind of lively, simple, um, just simple. Uh, things that you might see in nature, you know. I 
think that's worked best for this for this kind of pottery that we do. Uh, keep that. Keep it lively. Keep it simple. Yeah. Somehow, you know, it's interesting, but some of the more contrived decorations are really the worst. And it's the ones where you sort of think, well, I don't, I don't give a monkey's, you know, just to slap it on there. Sometimes they come out the best, don't they? You have to know a little bit about, you know, your brush and how it works best. But, you know, the best thing is just, you know, just... Let nature, and that's what it is really, isn't it? We're just sort of making grasses, making, making, um, I know the light's not brilliant in here at the minute. Maybe you'll see these better when they come out of the fire. I'll show them to you then. Okay, so there's those three, those three there. And, oh, I've got these little guys here as well. Let's get something on them quickly. We want to work fast, you see. We don't want to be... We want to keep things... Um, just keep thing, things simple. Simplicity. I like simplicity. Mm. D, 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 D. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do nicely. That'll do, pig. Did you see that movie? Babe. Babe. I like it at the end when he looks down at pig and says, that'll do, pig. <laughs> uh, yeah, a broken line, of course, is is better than a solid line very often. And when you're decorating with a brush, you find that the brush quite often you don't manage to get a perfect line. You know, when you're doing a stroke, like I'm going to do a stroke, you know, it it it, it gets intermittent. But don't worry about that. It's it's better like that. You know, it really is better. De 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 de. Yeah, that's it. Leave room for the kiln to to do its thing, you know, with the with the with the with the decoration, with the glaze, with the clay, you know, just you haven't got to always have it all uh, worked out, you see. At least I don't think so. Maybe you think different. I don't know. Yeah. One more. One more. These just some tight. These are very small little bowls that uh, you know. Well, I hope these are coming out. Coming out, you can see what I'm doing approximately. You don't want to see too closely what I'm doing, but you know. Yeah. Okay, that'll do for them. So they put them on a board over there. Good to go. 
Right, and now... Yeah, these, are, these pots here are all pots I've made a while ago. They've got that field glaze on, which... Yes, actually... I need these were already glazed, which were hangovers from a last firing or a few firings back from last year. And this field glaze comes out like brown. It's not very interesting, really. But if I spray wood ash over it, it does change it somewhat. These tankards are dipped in chino glaze raw, not fired, and so I thought I'd just actually put a bit of um, uh, yes, we'll bring the camera down here so, so you can see what I'm doing down there. What I'm going to do is I've got some who's that? Come on in, Gina. Here you come. Come on. Come on, inside. I've got some stuff here. This is rutil, rutil, which is a sort of, uh, pretty similar to ilmenite actually. Uh, it's got um, titanium and iron oxide. It's basically an oxide of titanium. And uh, what I wanted to do was just put a bit out here on this piece of on this mirror. Yeah, just like that, you see, a bit of powder. It's quite fine powder. And then and then what I'm gonna do is use that to Hey, don't get up here. I don't think so. Hey! Don't go knocking off my pots there. Yeah, a bit of water with that. We'll add a bit of water to that, you see. And then mix it up here. Chino, I just mind out where you're going, will you? Yeah, so the thing about these oxides, whether it's you know iron oxide, cobalt oxide, titanium, rutile, ilmenite, iron oxide, whatever it is, it, when you if you're going to apply them, you know, like with a brush, you need to get the the concentration of the of the pigment with the water, the mixture, what I've got, hang on, let's point the camera down there, you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, I mean, I use like tiles, you see, or in this case, this is a mirror. It's one of my mirrors I use uh, when I'm a throwing mirror, actually, but it doesn't matter. So I just want to get this, um, this mixture here Not too watery, not too thick, you see. Okay, so let's do, I'll just do here some simple decorating on this, this tankard. Yes, it's, I don't know what the time is, half past eight, and it's March 7th, I think. It's Tuesday. Ooh. See now this brush is, since I used it earlier on, it's dried out. So the the um, the pigment is dried out on the brush. I just got to I had in mind, what I had in mind was to do 
like a decoration of um, with uh, iron oxide and rutile, where I put the rutile on top of the on top of the iron oxide. That's what I had in mind. Um, Again, I don't want this too thick. Right, this uh, this tankard. It's going to band a couple of lines here, like that, and one down here. Like that. And just over the handle, we'll just brush some iron oxide, like so, okay, I just wanted to get a couple of these in the firing because um, I'm trying to head in a direction of eliminating bisque firing and I'm wanting to do Everything raw, raw fired. So, yeah, I'm having to sort of adapt my glazes and uh, etc. to that end. And um, yeah, so yeah, this waiting for a decoration. I think I'm just going to do something that I'm familiar with on it because so I'm going to do just a simple fox glove 